Okay, so this is the outline for chapter 24. So we will first introduce the electric potential and the electric uh, equipped potential surface. So which is related to the electric field line. And yeah, and, and then we will also introduce how to calculate the potential generated by different structure like the charged particle, electric dipole, uh, due to some uh, continuous distribution. And then after this, we can also, uh, we will also introduce how to, uh, uh, how to relate the electric field from the potential. There are some, uh, there are some relationship between them. Actually, uh, the potential will be, uh, sometimes will be e easier to, to calculate. And then, after you get the potential for the field, and then you can do some calculation on the, on it, and then you can find the E field generated by the structure. This is the idea. So it looks even more complicated, but yeah, but the usually the computation for the potential will be easier than calculating the E field because the E field is a vector field. So you need to consider the E field in uh, different axis component. Uh, and then you need to do the integration one by one. But for the potential, it's a scalar field. So when you add them together, then it will be easier. Okay, so also we will also introduce the potential energy for a, a system of charged particles and also potential of a charged isolated conductor. Okay, so here, it says uh, the electric potential V at point P in the electric field uh, of a charged object is defined like this. So uh, we usually V uh, usually use a V to uh, specify the uh, specify the uh, potential or the electric potential, or sometimes I I usually call it voltage in circuit theory. In circuit theory, we usually call it voltage rather than potential, but for physics guys, they will still call it potential, but yeah. So the potential is like uh, when you try to put a charge from infinitely far away to, to the electric field, then you need to do some work. You need to do some work. So where, uh, so V is negative W infinity over Q0. Q0 is the charge amount uh, of the test charge. Uh, the test charge is Q0. You try to put it from infinite far away to here, to here. Then you need to do some work. You need to do some work because you can simply imagine this bar is, this bar is positive charge. This is also a positive charge. So it will generate E view pointing uh, to the infinity direction, uh, to pointing uh, into the radial direction. So in that, in that case, suppose the E field is pointing to that side, and then you try to move it from infinite far away to here, then there will be always a force uh, uh, opposite to how you move. So actually you need to do some work to, to counter this force. So you need to do some work. So where W infinity is the work that would be done by the elect uh, electric force on a positive test charge, where it both from the an infinite distance to P. And U is the uh, potential energy or electric potential energy that would then be stored in the test charge uh, object system, uh, charge object system. So it's somehow like, uh, when you learn the mechanics, uh, when you learn the mechanics, suppose uh, you have an object M with mass M here. So we will define the potential energy here, U equals MGH, MG times zero. So the height is zero. So you don't have, uh, you don't have potential energy here. So if you just uh, leave it to uh, H here, then here we will have uh, U equals MGH to be the potential uh, energy. Then of course you need to do some work 
to really move it from high zero to high h. So that's that's the sim, sim, uh, similar idea here. Uh, so we have we have gravitational force here, mg, and here we also have the electrostatic force here. So that you need to do some work to counteract this uh, electrostatic force to move this charge from infinitely far away to here, to point P. Okay. So yeah, so this is the work done. Negative work done is the uh, over this Q zero is the is the electric potential, and also this negative W infinity is the U is the U. So need, you need to do some work, and then you you obtain some potential energy uh, like this. So we have U over Q zero here. So later on, we we may still use this. Uh, relationship u equals qv uh, u equals qv u is the potential energy q is the charge q is the charge amount equals the uh, times the electric potential Okay, so um, so here is some uh, relationship, like uh, yeah, if you have uh, yeah, this is the delta u, the which is the potential difference, potential difference between two points. Suppose uh, you have uh, uh, you have a charge uh, at the initial position, and then. You try to move it to the uh, final position. So at this point, you have a uh, vi as the uh, electric potential, and we have a uh, vf as the final potential. And this charge with the charge amount q. So if you try to move it from here to here, the potential change is called the potential difference delta v. So you just subtract this number to by this number, and then multiply by the charge amount will be the potential difference. Uh, potential difference. And also we still have this one W equals negative delta U, so which is nothing special. And here we also have the conservation of energy. If we assume there is no loss. Uh, yeah, usually there is no loss for the for the for the charge. So suppose, uh, yeah. So for the conservation and of energy, which means that the total energy, the total energy will be the k. I'm sorry, k. The total energy will be k plus u, k plus u, k plus u. Uh, k is the kinetic energy. U is the potential energy. Which is uh yeah so if we consider the conservation energy would be yeah which means that if we con consider there is no loss in between so we we have a ki the initial kinetic energy plus the initial potential energy will be the uh, final uh, kinetic energy plus the final uh, uh, potential energy which means that if we try to uh, move this term over. Which means we have a kf minus uh, ki will be negative uf minus ui. Just move this term over, move this term to the right side, move this term to the left side. So we have kf minus ki. This term is delta k. And this one is negative delta u. Negative delta u. So delta u will be q delta v. So like this. And if we really need to do some work, then delta k minus uh, will be equals to uh, negative delta u plus the work done.
Okay, so here let's take a look at a sample problem. So it says uh, electrons are uh, continuous being knocked out by the air molecules in the atmosphere by the cosmic ray, cosmic ray, cosmic ray in Chinese called the uh, cosmic ray particles. So usually it means the high energy particle, as I mentioned in chapter 21, maybe the gamma ray or x-ray, something like that. Particle coming from the space. So one release uh, each electron experience an electrostatic force F due to the E field that is produced in the atmosphere by charged particle already on the Earth. So here we have a E field generated by the Earth pointing downward, uh, pointing downward. So near the Earth's surface, uh, the electric field has a magnitude E is to be this value and is directly downward. What is the change delta U in the electric potential energy of the released electron? When the electrostatic force causes it to move vertically upward uh, through a distance D, small d, uh, through what potential change does the electron move? So suppose uh, the E, the electron in the in the uh, air mole molecule is uh, hit by the yeah, is is collide with the cosmic ray particle and then it try to move up, but of course the E field is uh, pointing downward. Yeah, so it moves for a distance d. So what is the potential change of the electron? So here we have W equals F dot with D. So I think you should know it when you learn the mechanics on in, in physics one or yeah. So F will be QE. This is what we have done in chapter 22 and then dotted with D. Okay, so here, here q q is uh q is yeah, q is this one q is this one actually we just uh keep it keep it as q uh and then here we have e pointing downward and then d pointing upward so it should be like uh, e times d cosine of uh, 180 degree so this one should be negative one this one should be negative one, which will be negative QED. So now we plug in the values. So Q, Q is uh, negative E, which will be negative 1.6 times 10 to minus 19. And then times E is uh, 150, 150. And then times. The distance is uh, 520 meter. So this number is uh, 1.2 times 10 to minus 14 joule. Okay, so next we we would like to consider the delta U will be negative W. Negative W will be negative 1.2 times 10 to minus 14 joule. So this is the this is actually the potential energy difference. And yeah, and of course the delta V will be delta U over Q u over q which will be negative 1.2 times 10 to minus 14 over this q is a uh, negative 1.2 uh, 6 times 10 to minus 19 which is uh, 4.5 times 10 to the fourth power volt uh, or 45 kilo volt so here this delta U is a negative number because this is uh, this E view is pointing downward. 
and this is a negative charge, so the force is actually pushing it upward. So you don't you you only need to do a negative work to yeah, which means that the E field automatically push this uh, electron upward. And actually for the E view, it is pointing downward. So in that case, uh, the V is higher. The V is higher for this side and V is uh, lower for this side, for this side. So actually we get, we get a positive voltage difference. So this is a uh, 45 kilovolt, uh, which is uh, lower than the Pikachu. Okay, so next, um, okay, next. We introduced the uh, equipotential surface here. Uh, yeah, so it says that uh, adjacent point that have the same electric potential form and form an uh, equal potential surface, which can be either an imaginary surface or a real physical surface. Uh, actually, it doesn't necessarily to be a real surface. So for example, in this uh, figure, we can see uh, this surface is a uh, equal potential surface with the potential to be V1. This is another one, V2, V3, and V4. So we try to con connect uh, all the points, uh, all the adjacent points uh, with the same electric potential to form the equal potential surface. So uh, here it says, uh, figure shows a family of equal potential surface associated with the electric field due to some distribution of charge. So here it says, the work done by the electric field on a charged particle as the particle move from one end to the other of path one and two is zero path one and path two. So let's see, um, this is path one. Path one, the starting point is from V1, the end point is from V1. So there is no work, no work because delta V, here we have delta V is zero for, for path one, or maybe V1, delta V1 is zero. So we don't need to do any work because uh, delta V is zero, then delta U is zero. So W equals negative delta U is also zero. And for path two, the starting point is, uh, is on the V3 surface. The end point is also on V3 surface. But here it shows the path is not actually on the V3 surface. It actually go out, mm, somehow go to the V4 and then go back. But here we only consider, uh, here we still consider delta V2 is zero here. We, on, we don't really care about what is the path. It can actually go from here to there and then go back. As long as it's go back, then, then the work done is, then the, uh, then the uh, voltage difference is zero or the potential difference is zero and you don't need to do any work regarding to this uh, transition. Or simply speaking, we only care about the starting point and the end point, we don't care the path. Uh, uh, soon we will have a sample problem about, about this uh, property. Okay, so because each of these path begins and ends on the same equipotential surface, and thus there's no net charge, uh, net change in potential. 
And here, the work done as the charged particle move from one end to the other, uh, other of path three. And uh, yeah, so here, here we have path three. Move from V1 to uh, V2, uh, V1 to V2. So actually delta V3 is uh, V2 minus V1, V2 minus V1, I think. And for V4, and for V4, it is also the same. It also goes from V1 to V2, although this path is go uh, over V2 and go back. So here, we for delta V4, we still have uh, the potential difference to be uh, V1 minus V2. So it says, uh, yeah, path three and path four is not zero, but has the same value for both or, uh, for both these paths because the initial and final point uh, potential are identical for the two paths. Not necessary, not necessary for the exactly the same path, uh, exactly the same point, as much as uh, the starting point is at the same equal potential different, uh, e equal potential surface, and uh, also the end point also on the same equal potential surface, then the potential difference will be the same. So there's the path three and path four connect the same pair of uh, equal potential surfaces. So this is a simple idea for their equal potential surface. Okay, so here comes some uh, mathematical uh, definition. So here it says, uh, electric potential difference between two points I and F is this one, is this one. So in this graph, we have initial point here and the final point here. And then we can just imagine uh, it move from I to F uh, along this path, along this path in green color. Okay, and this is the te test charge Q0. Uh, and you can also see the if you like, if you like in blue color, in blue color. So the electro potential difference, Vf minus Vi. Vf, Vf is this point, Vi is this point, will be this so-called line integral. This is a line integral. Line integral. So yeah, actually it looks like this. Uh, within here we have a E dot ds both of them are vector so as much as uh, we have a dot product between these two vector it become a scalar so actually we are integrating scalar so the answer will still be a scalar so this will be a scalar d a l a r scalar scalar because so we have a dot product here and then of course we integrate from uh, the initial point to the final point with a negative sign now we have a negative sign in the front. Actually, this is a definition. Uh, this is a definition. So where the integral is taken over any path connecting the points, if the integration is difficult along any particular path, we can choose a different path along which the integration might be easier. So actually, when you try to connect I and F, there are arbitrary infinite many, uh, infinite many uh, path between them you can go like this, you can go like this, go like that. Uh, any arbitrary path is okay. But when you really need to calculate this line integral, not every path is as easy to calculate as the others. So maybe only a few of them will be easy to calculate. So actually we need to uh, choose the path uh, carefully uh, so that to simplify the calculation. But yeah, actually, when we consider what does this integration mean, it is something like we try to separate this uh, this path into many many small segments, just like uh, this is this is one of the path uh, ds. So ds will be like uh, for this point, ds is pointing here. For this point, uh, ds is pointing to here. So the direction of ds will be the tangent line of uh, tangent line of that point. And of course, 
uh, it is directional. So if you just go from the initial point to the final point, Ds uh, will be roughly pointing to the right side, to the right side. Because uh, if you just consider the tangent line, Ds might be might might have two two options, maybe pointing to the left, pointing to the right. <coughs> but similar to uh, when we consider uh, E dot Ea, when we consider uh, this uh, this one for the Gauss law, we usually uh, we always I mean I, we always define the Da pointing outward uh, for the for the Gaussian surface here. Ds should also follow the direction of the path. And, and suppose we just uh, separate this path into many, many small segments, then, then the E field at uh, this part can be regarded as uniform, can be regarded as uniform. And then you can calculate E dot Ds at this point and for the other point, uh, for all the other, for the point of, uh, along this path. And then you add them together using the integral. So this is how this uh, line integral works. Okay, so here, hmm. usually we will uh, just uh, write the potential difference into just a V. For example, we can just uh, let VI to be zero to, to make things look uh, simple. Yeah, because even for the mechanics problem, uh, you don't necessarily define uh, u equals zero for that point. You can actually define u equals 100 or equals 1,000 1, for this point. Maybe u, u equals 10 uh, joule for this point. It's fine because usually we, you only consider the potential difference. You only consider the potential difference. If you add 10 to, hit to, to the lower point and then you also add 10 to the upper point, then the, the potential difference is uh, is still the same. So and so as this case, sometimes we will just make one of them to be zero to uh, to simplify everything. The absolute value of the potential is not so important. Usually, we only consider the potential difference. So here we can write it as v equals this uh, uh, line integral. And the specific case, uh, the simplest case of this line integral is something like this. We consider, we consider the E field is uniform over the, over the space. And then we just uh, move along that direction. So in a uniform field of a magnitude E, the change in the potential from the higher equipotential surface to a lower one separated by distance delta x will be nothing but uh, delta v equals negative e delta x, which is like integrating a constant. And suppose e has the same direction as the ds, as the path. So e dot ds is e times ds. And then integrating a constant will be like uh, e times the length of the, of the path, which is nothing but this. And I suppose you should have known this in high school physics. Okay, so I think oh, one thing I forgot to mention is that the SI unit for, for the potential, the SI unit for the potential V is, is V itself, is V itself. And of course the name for the, for the potential, for the potential is, uh, potential is, yeah, sometimes I call it voltage, voltage. And for this unit, and for this unit, it is volt, uh, volt. For the SI unit, uh, SI unit is volt. And potential, we call it voltage. Uh, I met many students, they cannot, cannot distinguish a voltage and volt. So sometimes they, 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 they say uh, re voltage, which is uh, not, not, uh, not the correct way.
way to to measure it. Okay, so SI unit for the voltage is volt. So both of them is written as capital V. And in chapter 21, we know the SI unit, the SI unit for E will be uh, Newton per Coulomb. And here, as much as we have this expression, so another SI unit for E can be written as uh, V over M. V over M. Both of them are correct. Both of them are correct. Because uh, we have V here. This is the uh, SI unit for E. And then the SI unit for X should be meter. So we have V over M to be, to be the SI unit for the E field. Okay, so this is a special case for the, for the potential difference. So let's see a sample problem here. So here it says two points I and F in a uniform E view, uh, pointing downward shown here. So the point lie on the same electric field line and are separate by distance D. So this is the initial point and the final point, and the distance between them is small d. Find the potential difference, Vf minus Vi by moving the positive uh, test charge Q0 from I to F along the path shown in green color, uh, which is parallel to the field direction. Okay, so this one, uh, we have a, sorry. We have a Vf minus Vi to be negative I F E dot Ds E dot Ds. Okay, suppose this path is from the initial point to the final point. So Ds is pointing downward. And also the E field is pointing downward. So we can simply write it as uh, I F. E, E, F, because uh, both of them point to the same direction. So we just uh, forgot the term a cosine of a zero degree, which is nothing but one here. Okay, so actually the E field is uniform over the whole space. So which is like integrating a constant. So which is nothing but E times D. D is the length of this path. So we have negative EB. Okay, so next uh, for the part B, we consider the path, which is different. So we move from I to C to F, from I to C to F. Okay, so actually these two points doesn't change. We have a middle point somewhere here. So now we consider the potential difference Vf minus Vi by moving the positive pair charge from I to F along the path ICF, ICF like this. Okay, so first, first we consider Vc minus Vi. And actually we, it is a negative integration from I to C, E dot Ds, E dot Ds. So, here E is still pointing downward. Ds from I to C is pointing to the right side like this. Ds, this is Ds pointing to the right side, E pointing downward. So we can simply have E dot Ds to be E times Ds cosine 90 degree. Cosine 90 degree is zero. So this one is Zero. So this is the first part, and then the, the second part is uh, Vf minus Vc, which is from here to, to here. Okay, so here we have a negative integration from C to F, uh, E dot Ds. So here, uh, here Ds. Uh, has a 45 degree with uh, the E view. So you can imagine uh, it is C, F, and then E, D, 
Cs cosine of uh, 45 degree, we have a find as a pi over four or 45 degree up to you. So this one is uh, this one is a square root of two over two, square root of two over two. And here we need to consider E B S. E is a constant, so E is a factor out. So we have an E, and then integrating C F D S. This is square root of two over two, which is the length of this path. The length of this path is simple because this is a right angle triangle. This is forty five degree. So suppose this is D. This is also B. And using the Pythagorean theorem, the length of this hypotenuse uh, is uh, square root of two times D. So actually, this is uh, negative E times square root of two D times uh, square root of two over two. So finally, we have a negative E D. And of course, we need to calculate Vf minus Vi, which is uh, Vf minus Vc minus Vc minus Vi. So Vc, Vc cancel each other. But here, Vc minus v, uh, Vf minus Vc is negative Ed. This one is uh, nothing but zero, nothing but zero here. So the final answer is negative Ed. And of course, it should, it should be the same as this answer, negative ED. As we mentioned, uh, uh, actually the, the initial point and the final point are the same. So no matter which path you, you choose, the answer should be the same. But this problem uh, only tells you that, yeah, this is, this is just an example tells you that if you take another path, the answer will still be the same. But of course the, the procedure of oh, this one takes Take small step to to calculate the overall answer. This one might be uh, much easier. But at least this is this is calculatable. Uh, you, you just go through a few more steps to get the same answer. Okay, so far, any questions? Okay. So here, it, uh, we talk about the uh, potential due to the charge particle. Uh, yeah, so, so which is actually the simplest case. We only have a, a single charge. And then also we would like to know the electric potential generated by this charge, similar as before. Uh, in chapter 21, we have two charge. We would like to uh, find the electrostatic force between them, the Coulomb's force between them. And then in chapter 22, as much as we have a single charge, we would like to find the electric field generated by it. Yeah, we would like to find the electric potential generated by this uh, charge. So here, suppose, um, suppose, um, yeah, of course, we, we, we make use of the definition of the electric potential. So this is the potential difference, which is the line integral. And then here we try to uh, consider, we have uh, we have to be the point infinitely far away. And then we I is the point we concern uh, uh, at, at our, this is point P. So this is, this is, the, this is the initial point. And then F is at infinitely far away. And this is the R, capital R, the, the potential, the, point, the potential we consider at this point. And also we, we let 
uh, we let Vf to be zero, usually we will define the electric potential to be zero at in finitely far away. And this point is what we concern, so we call it V. So here on the left side, we have zero minus V, which is a negative V on the left side. And on the right side, and on the right side, we have this line integral. We have this line integral. And uh, yeah, as you can see here, suppose we have a, we have a positive charge. Uh, actually, we consider the, the electric field generated by this charge rather than this test charge. This is only a test charge because uh, we, you need to find the potential uh, difference or the potential energy difference between this point and the point infinitely far away. So this is only the test charge. Okay, suppose you put it uh, somewhere here. The E field, the E field generated by this one is, is uh, this one, K times Q. Q is the charge amount of this charge. And then R squared, this is small r. This is small r. We consider a path from this point P to infinitely far away in the radio uh, in the radio direction, the radio direction. So this is a positive charge. So the E field is pointing upward here. And also the path is also pointing upward. So we have E dot DS will be nothing but uh, E D R, E R. So it could be uh, the textbook here called this direct, uh, Axis to be the small r axis, small r axis. So we have kq over small r squared, and then dr because uh, these two vector uh, points in the same direction, like this. Okay, so we can just plug in this one here. So this term is a constant. Q is also a constant uh, related to dr. So this green term is a uh, vector r. And then we have a dr over r squared inside the integration sign. And of course, this is the initial point. So we start from capital R to infinitely far away. So this is infinity. So the integration look like this. And uh, yeah, so this is a polynomial. It's a polynomial. So yeah, out to the end. So we just add the power by one and then divide this number. So negative one. So we just cancel this, cancel this negative sign. And then we evaluate this expression from capital R to infinity. So finally, we will get, we will get, when we plug in an infinity to here, it will be zero, then minus uh, Q over four pi and then not times one over capital R. So we have a negative side here and also negative side here. So they cancel each other. Finally, we get V to be one over four pi epsilon naught Q over capital R, capital R. But generally speaking, uh, we can just call it small r. So we just switch capital R to small r. Okay, so when we consider the distance, uh, small r from the charge, the potential will be one over four pi epsilon naught of k times q over r, k times q over r, and this is a scalar. This is very important. The potential is a scalar. Okay. Okay. So here, uh, a more general case is like uh, the potential due to a collection of charged particles is summation of a VK from one to N, from one to N. So you just need to add, I uh, just forgot this K here, this K here. So, so suppose you have a multiple charge, multiple charge particles, then you need, you when you try to consider the total potential or the overall potential, then you only need to calculate one by one and then add them together. But the good thing is that the potential is 
a scalar. The potential is a scalar. So you only need the algebraic sum. You don't really need to uh, decompose it into different direction components, and then you add them uh, one after another. So with no consideration of direction. So it makes uh, calculating the potential will be easier than calculating the EVU. So a positively charged particle produces a positive uh, electric potential. Uh, a negatively charged particle produces a negative electric potential. So it's trivial. And here we have a quick trap, trap point. Quick trap point. So the figure here shows three arrangement of two protons. Uh, rank the uh, uh, arrangement according to the net electric potential produced at point P, produced at point P, by the proton greatest first, uh, greatest first. So for, for this one, the red dot is a proton. Uh, red dot is a proton. This is a proton, this is a proton. So this is small d, and this is capital D, and then at point P. And then here, uh, this one and this one has a 90 degree. Uh, and this one, the two protons are at opposite sign. So which one do you think the uh, highest potential at point P? So uh, who do you think uh, A is A is larger? A is A is the largest one. No one. B is the largest one. No one. C is the largest one. Uh, C C is the how who who do you think uh, C is the largest one? No. So what is the what is the answer? So A or B or C or D? <laughs> D. <laughs> yeah, the answer is D. <laughs> All of them should have the same potential. Uh, same potential. Uh, for them. Uh, for all of them. Because here we don't really consider the direction. So actually, it's just like, uh, so for point P, for point, the voltage for point P will be nothing but K times uh, uh, E over D plus uh, K times uh, E over capital D. All of them are like this, because yeah, we only consider the distance and the, and the charge amount, the distance and the charge amount, the distance and the charge amount. So, all of the three cases, the, uh, the, the potential at point P are actually the same, are actually the same. But if we consider the E field, if we consider the E field, then of course it, it will be different. If we consider D field and, and so uh, E A will be, will be larger than E B, will be larger than E C because uh, yeah, for the E field, they point to the left side, as much as, uh, yeah, as much as uh, this is positive. So the E field points to the left side. So for part A, both of them point to the left side. Uh, for part B, uh, this is pointing to the, uh, pointing upward, this is pointing to the right side. So the overall is some, something like that. And then for this one, uh, Part of it, uh, part of the E field are canceled, are canceling. So, yeah, you can you can imagine for the E field, E A is larger than E B is larger than. E. But for the potential point of view, uh, A B C at point P will be the same. Only the point P will be the same. When you consider other points, of course, it will be different. Okay, so here, here is a sample problem. 
I think we can finish expect two. So here it says, what is the electric potential at point P? Uh, actually at the center of the square, uh, the distance D is 1.3 meter and the charge Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, like this. So when we consider point P, okay, so actually we, con uh, we need to consider the distance between Q1 to P and Q2 to P, Q3 to P, Q4 to P will, all, will be all the same. So we only consider this one uh, like this. So this is D, this is D, this is a right angle triangle. So this distance is uh, D over square root of two. Okay, so V will be a uh, summation of uh, VK, K equals one to four, and it will be K times uh, Q1 over uh, R, R, uh, R will be this uh, square root, uh, uh, D over square root of two. Q1 over R plus Q2 over R plus Q3 over R plus Q4 over R. So it is nothing but uh, K over R and then Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 plus Q4. So you can quickly imagine, uh, quickly know that uh, calculating the potential will be much easier. So K is uh, 8.99 times 10 to the ninth power. And then R, R is D, D over square root of two, 1.3 meter over square root of two times, uh, this is 12 minus 24 plus 31 plus 17 times 10 to the minus nine power. So it is uh, 350 volts, 350 volts at this point. And of course, uh, yeah, this figure tells you that the equal potential surface will be somehow like this, be somehow like that. Because uh, this is a positive charge. This is the negative charge. This is a positive charge positive charge. Yeah, it might be somehow like that, but why it would like that? And actually you need to, you need to calculate uh, all the potential over the whole space. And then you try to find out, oh, this is close to 350. And then you try to connect the line together. But roughly speaking, these are all positive charge. So you can, you can imagine they are group. They are in a group, and this is a negative charge. So the equal potential line will be somehow lie between them. Somehow lie between them. But why the 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 shape will look like this? And actually, you need to calculate it. Calculating all the potential over the whole space. Maybe you can just uh, write a computer program to to calculate it out quickly. Or you will seek for some of the EM simulator to really calculate it. This is another sample problem. And we can finish it quickly. So 12 electrons are equally spaced and fixed around a circle of radius capital R relative to uh, V equals zero at infinity. What are the potential? and the E field at center due to this electron. So for part A, uh, V, V will be K times negative 12 E over capital R. So very quickly, uh, you can determine one by one. So this is negative E for each of them. And then the distance between them is R, and then you add all them together. So we have a K times negative 12 E over, uh, over R. And for the E field, it should be zero because this one will generate the E field pointing upward. And for this one, it will generate the E field pointing downward. So for the opposite sign, the electron will generate E field uh, to be canceled. 
and so was the other one. This one and this one will be cancelled. This one and this one and this uh, will be cancelled. So on and so forth. So all of that, all of the E will be cancelled. So E equals zero for, for part A. And for part B, uh, it says all the electrons are, are distributed over this uh, 120 degree arc. So what is then the potential at C? So there will be nothing different because it's only related to the charge amount and the distance. The distance doesn't change and the charge amount doesn't change. So at point C, the potential doesn't change at all. Okay. But here E will not be zero because E view is a vector, so you need to consider the vector sum, but yeah, E does not, uh, E is not zero at this case. Uh, how does the E view FC change, if at all? So it probably point to somewhere design, but actually you, yeah, maybe, it's hard to determine uh, what, what is the direction exactly because you don't really know uh, how it distributes. It, it should be related to how it distributes, but somewhere point to the left side. 